Okay, this is a 1994 Honda Accord? Civic. Civic. 1994 Honda Civic. And what I want to show you guys is how to do uh, some oxygen sensor tests. We're going to do the signal circuit. I'm going to show you how to hook up to that. Uh, we're also going to do the heater circuit. And then I'm, uh, the final test would be uh, if you have a vehicle that comes in with a dead O2, no signal at all, how to do a circuit integrity test. Uh, this vehicle has no scan data, no uh, available data stream to look at, so it's all manual tests, uh, which makes this even more important to know how to do this. So first thing is I'm um, looking at the uh, four pin connector of the O2, so we're looking right here. And uh, what you'll notice is you have four different colors, and this is the, the sensor side is, is uh, to the right here, and you see two whites, there's two whites on that side. I flip it over and what you see uh, is a gray and a black. So knowing wire color sensor side helps, these universal uh, colors that Boss uses, two whites, a gray and a black, helps me to know which one the signal wire is without a wiring diagram and it's the black wire. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna T-pin the black wire and we're gonna get a reading off of that. And oxygen sensors need to be hot to work. So I need to start the car, warm it up, hold the engine about 2,000 RPM for a couple of minutes to get it active, to get it hot, and then we'll take a look at what the signal looks like. All right, I have the scope, positive lead. Can use a multimeter too, digital multimeter. Take the positive lead to the signal wire, which is the black wire, and the negative lead is attached, in this case, to a known good ground and I've just chosen the uh, ground location of that strap. And we're gonna start the car, warm it up. We're gonna take a look at this signal. See the engine's cold right now. We got about a 400 millivolt reading, that 0.4. Looks like a bias line maybe on this car is being used. Sensor's gotta be hot to work, so we're heating it up with the RPM up a little bit. See the sensor starting to come back to life here. We're looking for a range of around 200 to 800 millivolts. That'd be 0.2 to 0.8 on this screen. You see as it's warming up, its amplitude is increasing. Looks like a pretty nice looking O2. Amplitude looks good, 200 to 800, roughly in that range. You see your 0.2, we're hitting 0.2, going above 0.8, that's okay. Zero to one volts, it's normal range. So it's not just amplitude you're worried about, you're also worried about frequency. And so you wanna have about one to five hertz in that range, typical one to two hertz. Good, let that idle. Just be a little bit less noisy. Detailed testing of an O2 though, you want to be at a higher RPM. Uh, I don't want to calculate frequency of this O2 at idle. There's not enough exhaust gas uh, going past the sensor. You see how uneven and unsteady that is now at a lower speed. Uh, it will still fluctuate, will not be the same kind of clean signal you see at a higher RPM. So one to five hertz is typical. Uh, or one to five hertz is your spec. Typical range is usually about one to two hertz. That's number of times per second the signal repeats itself. So go ahead and hold it back to two grand again. And we want to take a look at this frequency of this thing. I'm gonna pause this. All right. All right, you can shut it off for a second. Let's talk about this signal. Take a look at it. You see from, from here to here is one second. That signal is repeating itself. There's a high to low to high. 
that's occurring in one second. This is about a one hertz signal on this O2. So I'm okay with the frequency of this O2. I'm okay with the amplitude of this O2. Notice again, warm engine, warm up the O2. Is important 2000 RPM roughly when we took this measurement. That's really the ideal conditions for testing an O2. That would be a signal circuit waveform or a signal waveform looking at amplitude and frequency of the O2. Okay, next thing I want to show is what would this look like if you just had a regular multimeter? Would we, have, would we be able to see the same thing? So go ahead and start the car. I'm just uh, showing you the, the uh, multimeter range on the Varus. And it is still able to be done. You can still look at an O2 with a digital voltmeter, but you can't see frequency like I showed you. We, we can still see the movement of it. So go ahead and uh, hold the RPM up to about 2,000. This is what that same O2 sensor signal would look like on a digital multimeter. So can you make the determination that that amplitude is okay? You can if you watch it long enough. I see a point four. I see a point eight. I'd like to see it at least some point in time a point two in that picture. It's a lot more difficult to tell its range though, isn't it? Lowest I saw so far was a point nine. I definitely saw a 0.8. I like the upper end of the amplitude. There's a 0.38. I want to see it come down to at least 0.2 at some point in time using a digital multimeter. So you keep watching it. 0.38 is the lowest I saw. There's a 0.28 right there. Did you see it? You see how long that took though to get down to 0.2? To really see that, it can be done is the point, but you cannot see frequency, you can only see the amplitude of the O2. Go ahead and let it idle. So that would be your O2 using a digital multimeter. Not as good of a tool, but still can be done.